hope you're all well. So we've looked at doing knockout text before with a single layered image and we've also looked at doing knockout shadow text before. So today I wanted to look at how we can do knockout using multiple layered images. And it's actually really easy to do and it looks amazing. Now you can see that depending on the word you're going to use, you will end up with different finishes depending on the word and the font. So it's well worth having a really good play. So for example, between our L and our A here, we've got quite a gap. So we lose some of our image. The same between our O and our A here and our L. Whereas on this word, it's a complete image apart from a few pieces. So it depends on the look that you want to go for, but it's all the same process. It's just a preferential choice. So the key to a good knockout is a good font. You want a really uniform font and you want it to be quite chunky and bold because it really does pop then. So I like to use the font Autumn. But of course, as I say, it's well worth having a play and there are lots of fonts that you can use. So the first thing I want to do is actually unlock it and I'm just going to transform it slightly. I just want it to be a little bit longer and I just want to make sure I'm happy with it. Once I am, I'm then going to lock it back up. The other key to a knockout is you want your letters to be as close as they can be without touching. So if we go to letter space and we're just going to start bringing our letter space in and you can see we're getting closer and closer. So if we go one more, they're not touching but they are super close. So we're just going to go up one and I'm happy with that so we're going to keep it like that. I'm then going to go and grab my image. So this image is actually from Design Bundles and this whole thing is very appropriate at the moment. So I will link to it below in the description and I will also link to the previous tutorials that we've done incorporating Knockout. So I'm going to bring my image over and I'm going to place it so it sits over my text and I want it to sit comfortably over my text. Once I'm happy, I'm then going to highlight all, I'm going to go to align and I'm going to center. I'm then going to click on my image and I'm going to ungroup it. The next thing I'm going to do is hide my blue layer and my red layer. So I'm only working with my text and my white layer. I'm then going to highlight and I'm going to slice. If we scroll up, you'll see we've got two black layers and then we've got two white layers. We want to always work with the two black layers, especially if we're doing it like this where you're using multi layers. You want the two top black layers. So we're going to change the color of this one to white and we can then come in and delete these two white layers. We do not need those. I'm then going to hide my top white layer and I'm going to bring back my blue layer. Again, I'm going to highlight all and I'm going to slice. Once again, if we scroll up, you'll see we've got two black layers and two blue layers. So we only want to work with our black layers. So again, I'm going to change the color to blue and I can then delete these two blue layers. I'm then going to hide my top blue layer and I'm going to bring back my red layer. Again, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to slice. And again, you'll see we've got two black layers and two red layers. So our top black layer, we're going to change to red and we can then delete our two red layers. If we then bring back our blue layer and our white layer, you'll see that our image has taken on the shape of our text. And that is what a knockout is. The only difference is we've done it with a multi-layered image. So we're going to get all those lovely colors and it's going to look amazing. The next thing I want to do is highlight all and I'm just going to get it to the size that I want. 
Once it's all sized up, you can then go to make it. Now we are working with iron on today, so we need to go through and make sure that we mirror each one of our mats. If you're working with iron on, it's really, really important that you do this. We're then going to go to continue. So layers one, three, and four, I'm actually going to use foil HTV. And layer number two, I'm just using a plain black HTV. So I shall cut this one out in iron on, and then one, three, and four, I shall cut out using the foil iron on setting. So I've got my green mat here, and I've also got my plain black HTV. So as always, not only do we mirror in design space, but you're going to place it shiny side down onto your mat. You also want to go in with your fabric brayer and just make sure that it's nice and adhered to your mat. And we can then put it through the machine. You're going to do exactly the same with your foil. So you're going to turn it over so it's shiny side down onto your mat. So we've now finished weeding all our pieces. We are going to use our Easy Press today. So we've got our Easy Press mat. I've got a jute bag here, which I've got from craftblanksuk.com. And I've got a homemade pressing pillow as well. I will link to the tutorial to make these in the description below. So I've placed my pressing pillow inside of my pocket here. And I'm just going to preheat the area with my Easy Press just for five seconds to take out any moisture. So you can see I've placed my first layer down, which is my black plain layer. So I don't need a Teflon sheet because I've got my carrier sheet over and I am using my Easy Press. I'm going to press it at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. you've pressed it you then want to leave it to cool down just for about 30 seconds and we're then just going to come in and gently peel away so the next part is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle so you want to get your next layer and I always find it's easier to go with a layer that encompasses the outside areas and you're just going to come in and work out where it all lines up and once you've done this first layer it becomes really easy afterwards now you may find that some of it lines up perfectly and some of it is just a little bit out it can happen HTV can shrink slightly when it's heated up so all you're going to do is just grab your scissors and you just want to make a snip in the area where it doesn't quite line up you can then come in and just manually place them. Now although this part's got its carrier sheet on, our black is now exposed. So we are going to have to go in with a Teflon sheet. So because we're now working with foil, I've reduced the Easy Press to 305 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. And I find that this works really well with this bag. 
everything is a little bit of an experiment so if you've got new products that you haven't used before it's worth doing just a small test area first because everything will vary slightly your times and your heats will vary slightly depending on the HTV you're using and obviously the material you're using but the easy press settings are a really good guideline Again, we're just going to let that cool down for about 30 seconds. We're then going to go in for one final press at 305 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds just to make sure that everything is nice and sealed.